Good morning, and welcome to the Lone Star Weekly Business Hour. Your host, Rick Schisler, is a Silver Fox advisor who personally has over 40 years of experience as a serial entrepreneur. So sit back, pull out your pad and pencil, and get ready to take notes as we join Rick Schisler in his Lone Star Weekly Business Hour. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. What a wonderful day it is here at uh, Lone Star Community Radio. We're on FM. I don't know if you're listening on FM. If you're not, I'd encourage you to do it. Uh, I was listening to the show driving in today on 106.1. It's also available at 104.5 if you're out around the lake, uh, Highway 105. Uh, sound it came in good, nice and clear. So we're all excited here at the studio. And So this is our first weekly business hour on FM. In this edition of the Weekly Business Hour, uh, we're going to have uh, Greg Zachary, owner of the Oilery, will be our guest in the studio. We're also going to talk about some other issues, including your new vision. So let's get started with today's show, and we're going to start with that thought for the week. Uh, thought for the week this week, we'll talk about your new vision. You know, we're at a funny time, I think, in the history. There's been a lot written in the papers lately and a lot talked about with the current election, and a lot of folks are concerned. Uh, I suggest that maybe what it is, they need to take a minute and think about what their vision for the future is because there seems to be so much uncertainty, a lot of it created by the anxiety uh, that people create for themselves when we're in a conversation. You know, I read a quote the other day, done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. And that was written by Sheryl Sandberg, who you might know as the chief operating officer of Facebook. The idea is you need to get things done. Don't try to do them to perfection. Just get them done so you can move on. And that's what I want to encourage you to do with your vision. If you need to set a new vision right now or kind of adjust your vision or review your vision, something a lot of people don't do. You know, one of the things I do, uh, one of the cornerstones of my uh, practice as an advisor and a mentor is that I believe people need to set an exit strategy, preferably when they first start in business. Um, but if you've already started in business, there's nothing wrong with backing up a half a step and setting that exit. And that's part of your vision, what your vision is for yourself, your business, where you want to be when your business comes to an end. And that is part of the vision process I'm talking about. Ask yourself, how has your vision changed? Is this election just a bunch of fooey? a bunch of loose conversation, a bunch of, well, I better not go there, but there are all kinds of things. But what is the impact? What will be the real impact of the election that takes place tomorrow? Personally, I think we'll pick up the pieces because there's sure a lot of shattered pieces around. A lot of folks have had hurt feelings, but the pieces will get picked up and our economy and our business will start moving ahead as it would regardless of what happens in the election. So take a little opportunity, take some of that anxiety, if you have some, off and think about your vision. Review the vision that you should have all the time. And if you don't have a vision, including an exit strategy, then take a few minutes and think about it. I find thinking about my vision and where I'm going to be kind of exciting. It motivates me. And then I also want to encourage you to record it, write it down or type it in your computer so that you can check in every once in a while and see if you're still focused on your vision. Remember, we always have new directions and opportunities to follow in our business. Well, you're in the right place if you're a business owner, manager, or you're considering starting your own business. The weekly business hour is where Montgomery County comes to talk about the latest in business news, ideas to improve your business, and to hear from some of our own local business leaders on how they have found success right here in Montgomery County. I want to remind you before we go too far that we're on Facebook, and I would encourage you to go look up the weekly business hour page and like it. Also set up an alert so as we post each week's show, you're notified so you can listen to the podcast of the show. Well, first, let's check on the business going on right here at Lone Star. Dick, what's on tap for Lone Star this coming week? If you haven't noticed, Rick, we're on FM, Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1, so we encourage everyone to check out those radio dials. Coming in, the, coming up into the next few weeks is we're going to be launching our TV format. We'll be able to stream video live from the studio and also check out all of our talk shows and other participating shows on Channel 12 and Suddenlink, and that's all being scheduled between now and the first week of December. 
And another uh, shout out to everybody. Our website, IRLoneStar.com, is going to be going through major changes this week. So if you have any issues, please report them on our Facebook at Lone Star Community Radio or email me at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com. There are a lot of changes happening to the station. A lot of things going on. Uh, step back and look at a business. If your business isn't on the move, watch Lone Star. I think you'll see some things. A lot of exciting changes, positive things going on here at Lone Star. Well, let's get to the best part of the show, and that's talking to our live guest. And I want to introduce to you Greg Zachary, the owner of the Oilery. Greg, thanks for stopping by today. Well, Rick, thanks so much for inviting me, and uh, welcome to all the uh, listeners out there. And congratulations on being on FM now. That's quite an accomplishment. Well, thank you so much. I think the folks here at the station have done a great job, all the volunteers and folks that work here of making it happen. Well, I always like to start and let you kind of introduce yourself uh, as our studio guest to our audience. Give us a little background of your business and kind of what brought you to the point to start your own business. Absolutely. Well, I started as a peanut vendor back at the Astrodome in 1970, so I've literally been selling to the public uh, for 46 years. Uh, But the vast majority of my experience was with a small local company uh, in Houston called Soundwaves. Um, I literally would take on whatever the owner was dreaming of the night before, and that would be what I would be implementing the very next day. And we grew organically from uh, one store all the way to to, uh, nine uh, and then thanks to the internet, uh, that sort of is back on the wayside. But my experience there really, really paid off. I, I loved working with the neighborhoods and watching them grow. And then uh, I look back at the people that uh, worked with us during that time, too. And, uh, you know, some of our best employees would be our customers who would come in and we would develop them for a while and learn to know more, much more about them and then bring them on for us. And then, lo and behold, a few of them uh, succeeded me once I got married moved out to California. And there I found other success uh, with another small family company called Boot World. And so I really found my niche to be working in a smaller entrepreneurship. Uh, I found myself to be lost when I worked for bigger companies. Uh, I even, uh, I don't know, I I worked for one company. uh, I I will leave it. It It's a leader in their industry, but it was uh, probably the worst four months of my entire life. And I don't even list them ever. Uh, It was just one of those things. But I learned from that experience to not get lost in the corporate structure. Uh, Small entrepreneurships are really what uh, run the economy in America. Uh, I wish our governments would figure that out a little bit better. Uh, that would be really a nice thing. But it's just something that I've always wanted to do. Uh, was I, I, I run these companies for various people and had great success with them, and I always found great accomplishment with that from both developing those customers but also developing the people who worked with us and seeing them take those skills that uh, we passed on to them and, and help their own business into careers. And that's really what, what did it. You know, and then lo and behold, October 14, I'm watching Shark Tank, and here we are to this day. Uh, you know, I saw an entrepreneur on there who just poured his heart out to uh, America, and uh, the uh, the five sharks stood up to a couple of them who wanted him to go to a much larger footprint than what he was comfortable with. And I knew right then and there, uh, when someone's going to turn down someone else's money because his vision, he's so uh, so exact about it. And knew exactly that this is what I wanted to do. That was when I knew it was time to you know, give this a whirl and step out and work for myself. And uh, the opportunity was very, very you know, rewarding so far. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. You brought 46 years or so of experience. Uh, and I think that's invaluable uh, when you start out. But you decided uh, the oilery, I believe, is part of a franchise. But you decided, even though you had a lot of business experience, to go with a franchise. Why was that? Well, there was the uh, the fact that it's very, very hard on your own to find all your suppliers. You know, that's that's a really, really tough thing. And also the fact that you've come into something that's sort of ready-made. It's ready for you to come in and put yourself into a machination that works for others. You know, I'm the 10th franchise in America, so we've already got something that's been tried and true. In this case, it's been uh, over 12 years. Uh, and so I examined the system that they had. I even went to a couple of the stores prior to you know, signing my papers, and those visits were invaluable. Uh, I was able to uh, visit a store up in the Portland area, and spent, he was the second oldest franchise around. And just, I spent a full day with the gentleman, you know, speaking to him, finding out the ins and outs, what, you know, he, the pitfalls that he had found. And he's still my mentor here in the system. Uh, and that really uh, paid off, uh, you know, because... There's just so many unknowns when you come out and do it on your own. Uh, you know, equally rewarding once you get past those. But in my case, in my age and stage in life, 
I needed something that already had that design ready for it. And then all it needed was me with my expertise and come in and then take, take it from there. You know, that's one of the reasons when people talk to me about starting business, which I talk to quite a few folks, usually it's when they don't have a lot of business experience. I suggest a franchise because a good franchise will kind of set it up for you and help you on that business end to get started. But you made a good point. You say, well, at my point in life, you know, and I wanted to find a system that works. And has the system worked for you? Yes, indeed. Yes, it has. As a matter of fact, uh, last night I placed uh, another order, uh, you know, and I was able to do that uh, at, at night at home thanks to the POS system that we have. Uh, I mean, geez, back in 79 uh, at Soundways, we had a register that was nothing more than a glorified uh, adding machine. Now I've got a system that literally updates the inventory within five minutes of a sale. I don't have to be at the store anymore to take that inventory. I can, you know, trust the sales and do it. And literally I was able to place a complete inventory order in less than an hour once I got home. Uh, another, just a reward of a system that's been working, you know. And uh, that's, that's something that really made a point because they had just taken on this POS system uh, right when I started investigating it. And, uh, you know, that conversation I had up in Portland, uh, he had been one of the first ones to, you know, take the new system, and he just raved about it and talked about, you know, how everything was moving forward. Uh, that also told me something because sometimes you get into a system where people, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Kurt Campbell embraces, you know, innovation, and that also was, a, you know, a decision or a part of the decision, you know, when I decided to go ahead and join up. You know, just in, a, in the minute or so we have before we need to go to break, but you make a really good point, and I hope people picked up on it, and it's the fact that technology, which is becoming such a big part of our daily lives, but particularly in business, almost any kind of business, and the fact that you go with a company that's already put that technology together. I've seen so many independent businesses struggle, and I've helped them find people to help them with their technology uh, it's, it's very challenging. And I think that's an absolutely wonderful reason to give a franchise system or some type of system process, some real consideration when you're opening a business. Absolutely. Rick, you know, I mean, go ahead and put your talents to, you know, where, where they should be. You know, myself, I've been a buyer. I've been, a, you know, a manager, HR, I've, I've got a ton of different background, but my IT experience is minimal. I mean, when I went to school, it was called Fortran. They, they say Latin's a dead language. No, Fortran's a dead language. Uh, IT has just changed a lot. And uh, I, I'm not somebody who's all that comfortable with it. But once I learn it, yeah, I'm great. And that's where my wife comes in so handy because she has that IT background. Uh, but, yes, the system, I mean, when you can embrace it, you know, and, and that's the way to go with it. Don't be afraid of it. Embrace it, you know, and use the system that's been working for others converse with them and find out what they, their challenges were and then uh, work on those if they happen to be your own challenges and then just, you know, take all the benefit of it. Well, Greg, that makes a lot of sense. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're at that point where we need to take our first break. Hope you'll stay with us. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the unique challenges that Greg uh, faced in opening his business and talk about his partner, Joanne. So please stay with us. We'll be right back with you. Are you paying too much for your personal or business insurance? Patricia Cooper Insurance on FM 1488 and Tamina Road is an independent agency that can shop multiple carriers to find the best rates and coverages to fit your specific needs. Call us today at 281-356-9955 and let us go to work for you. Patricia Cooper Insurance, where our customers are treated like family. Schistler, your Silver Fox advisor and host of the Weekly Business Hour. And we've been visiting with Greg Zachary, the owner of the Oilery. Uh, Greg, you've got a really interesting story, and I want to be sure we share it because you ran up against a challenge when you started your business that uh, that does happen to some people. Uh, but from my perspective, you did some things I think that were very well done, very wise, and I'd like you to share them. You went ahead and after your, uh, I guess, your epiphany that you had with the Shark Tank, uh, found the right franchise, the oilery, and you uh, proceeded down that. But then there were delays in getting your business open. <laughs> yes, indeed. Share that with us a little bit. <laughs> oh, I tell you, uh, literally, it was 13 months and one week from the day that we signed our papers to the day we were able to open. 
But I tell you, though, it was destiny because the day we were open was our 22nd wedding anniversary. So that was the day it was supposed to be happening. But in the meantime, a lot of these problems were finding the proper location. You know, I initially wanted to be in, in the woodlands because, hey, that's where everything's happening in this county. Well, I encountered a lot of second and third generation vacancies. And that's what I was being shown by real estate folks. And uh, to be honest with you, most of those vacancies are still vacant today. So I made the right call by, you know, passing on those. And then one day I'm driving home on 1488 and boom, I saw a sign for brand new construction. So I said, okay, let's check this out. And I was able to negotiate a lease and get all that going. And then last August, we, uh, you know, encountered some weather delays. You know, uh, I signed in July and then in August, we uh, actually got a, got a slab going and then, uh, Shoot, it was six more weeks before they started putting any kind of bricks up, and on and on and on. So we just had a lot of weather-related delays um, that added to that. But in the meantime, the first thing I did is I joined uh, Woodlands Area Chamber of Commerce. Then after that, one of those members invited me to be a guest at his other chamber. And I went out there, and I met six other people there who started inviting me to all their BNI groups. And literally, I made 32 different BNI groups in the, in the county and in parts of, of Harris County, from Humble to Tomball through Spring, all the way up through the Conroe area, if there was a BNI group that I could find access to, I visited, and some even twice, made some great contacts. In addition to that, I also joined two other chambers. I joined a Magnolia Parkway Chamber, which is the street I'm on. It's the fancy name for 1488. And then I also joined one of the fastest growing uh, chambers in the, the area, the North Houston Hispanic. And that's because they really, really promoting, you know, small business. And so by doing this, I got my, you know, my name out there and the word out there. And it just, I made some, just some awesome, awesome contacts, you know, and that was, you know. Well, you know, the, and, and I really appreciate that. You know, the fact that when you go into this and it's already a new business, I've done that. I've been there more than once in my life. Uh, it's a little nerve wracking, always issues, but the build out of your property, a new property, and then get your space built out. Uh, and not being able to move in and, you know, ready uh, on the, really on the starting line every day, waiting for the gun to go off. You did some really wise things in my opinion. You really inserted yourself because I know as I moved around the Montgomery County business community, I would see Greg and it, and people say, well, there's Greg, he's with the oilery, but, and you would get up and say, well, I don't have a story yet, but we're coming. And you were coming for quite a long time. Uh, but I think you did a really great thing. You didn't just sit at home or or what's going to happen. You really inserted yourself into the business community at large and made sure that you were known and that your product was known, what the oilery was, and so on and so forth was well known. And I think that was a great move on your part. Well, thank you. But also, I met some great people along the way. I, you know, I was able to find my insurance man. I was able to find the people who did my window dressings. Uh, I found uh, you know, uh, people who did my security system. And what was really important for me in all these uh, you know, discoveries was also keeping our money local. Uh, like my landlord, he wanted us to uh, use a uh, chosen sign company. Uh, well, my contractor knew of somebody over in Porter. I walked, you know, I ran, ran on over there, saw that they have their factory right behind their office, toured it, you know, and went, hey, that's who I wanted to go with. Not only was he 50% less, he got it in a lot cheaper. So I was, I mean, faster, I'm sorry. So I was the first one that got our sign up. Um, you know, and I kept the money in Montgomery County. And that was something that really was a, a major, you know, a, you know, decision for me was to make sure that, hey, I was helping small businesses the same way they were helping me. Because the really cool thing, and I go back to that very first guy who gave me those six contacts, was everybody latched on to me and gave me direction and gave me help. And so now these contacts are helping me continue to build the business, but also a lady opened up in our center, and I was able to pass on all that information to her, you know, to help her out. It's her very first business, too. Uh, hey, you know, we, you know, giver's game. You know, that's one of the things we learn about in BNI. You want right. to make sure everybody, you know, helps each other out. Because, again, the tenet of American society, or economic society, is small businesses. That's how we grow. That's where our jobs are coming from. And it's just super, super important for me. And then by keeping it local, you just keep spending that money around in the same area, and everyone's going to benefit from it. You go to a national firm and spend the money there, then it goes to Atlanta or New Orleans or wherever. And that's great for those cities, but it doesn't help us. Right. You know. Well, being local is, is a big tenet, I think, in small business. It needs to be one of the things that every small business does. The oilery, and we really haven't talked about it. You know, one of the 
questions I like to ask people is why do I, why should I, or why, uh, am I attracted to your business? Why do I come to the oilery? Why, what's so special? Tell us a little bit about it. Well, thank you. Uh, the oilery is America's largest hand bottler of extra virgin olive oil. And what it is is that when you come into the store, you're going to be greeted with 29 gleaming stainless steel tanks containing the world's finest and freshest extra virgin olive oils and aged balsamics that come from Italy, along with nut oils that come from you know various parts of the world. Uh, sesame seeds is coming from uh, Japan and so on. And you're encouraged to try and sample each and every one of them. And then when you make your decision, right, only then do we fill the bottles up for you. We never, ever pre-fill anything for it. And that ensures that what you just tasted is what you're going to be taking home. And that's what differentiates us from anybody else. Uh, and when I see the finest and the freshest is that we only offer the most recent harvest. Uh, and obviously, it just opened. It's going to be the freshest harvest. But next spring, when the new harvest comes in, I am donating whatever stock I have left over to both Interfaith, the Woodlands Food Bank, and Montgomery County's Food Bank. I've already made those arrangements. So that way, this is, you know, our community also will be benefiting from it. And then my clients will always be assured that every time they come into the oilery, they're only going to be offered the finest and the freshest harvest. Well, you know, and I, that's what you're selling, freshness. And that's a big thing, I think, in people's minds these days. You know, before we run out of time, I want to talk about a, a third thing I found impressive or different about your business, and we talked about it a little bit. You have a partner, and I think partners uh, are, are challenging. I've had businesses have done well with partners. I've had other times where partners were, were not exactly a positive thing in the business. And in this case, your partner is your wife, which I think brings its own challenges as well, but can also add to the success. And I think what's interesting, ladies and gentlemen, in this type of business, which is a retail business, you work side by side all day long. It's not like somebody's in the office and somebody's out front. There's no real separation because I've been in the store myself several times because uh, my wife and I really enjoy the products. But you guys work together. Tell us how you make that work. Well, I tell you, uh, Joanna's my best friend, not only my wife, but uh, I've known her for 21 years before we married. and We've been married now for 22 years. Uh, it's really a unique thing when you can, you know, have a lifelong partner who is your, also your best friend. Um, and that's also, that's what makes it work. Uh, but also we bring different skill sets to everything. I mean, I'm a career retailer. I've been selling, as I mentioned, for 46 years. My wife comes from the office environment. Uh, so like that IT issue that I was talking about, I can call her up and describe something and she can walk me through it, you know, and I've got the other experience. So we mesh really, really well. I mean, we are literally salt and pepper. Uh, it's just we are, we match up so well, uh, and we are best friends, and that really makes a huge, huge difference. But, you know, what's really cool about it is that initially she didn't even want, didn't even know what I was doing. You know, I'm having these long, long conversations, and she's wondering what the heck's going on for a couple hours because it took a while to, to have these conversations with the, the franchise representatives. And then he started saying, hey, she really needs to be involved to know what you're doing. And then by getting her involved in those conversations, she started developing her own interest and no longer thought it was just a, a midlife crisis for me. And so that was really cool. And then she just came to me one day and said, you know, I'm really tired of working for other people too, just like you are. Can I join you? And I said, by all means, let's do it. So we both, uh, you know, by that time had been approved for the franchise. Uh, we both put it on our notice and then just rolled up our sleeves and started going after it. Well, that's a wonderful story, a partnership really born right there out of mutual interest. Uh, let me ask you this, a final question in the minute or so we have left, because I think it's important, as I think you already do, is to share your experience. If someone came to you today and said, gosh, I'd really like to start a business, what's the one piece of advice that you'd be sure you give them? Surround yourself with people who have been down this road and absorb their advice. You know, we can always learn, you know, I mean, the old adage that this just happens in Texas all day long about if it ain't broke, don't fix it. No, I'm sorry. Some of the worst things you ever want to hear is we've always done it this way. Be open to innovation and be open to new ideas and let someone help you along those ways. Because, yes, you you may have a great vision and some great ideas, but there's other ones out there. You can incorporate those to improve the entire environment. And I wish you a lot of success. And if, you need, and if someone needs some, some help, I'll be happy to pass on everything that I've learned throughout the process and the contacts that I've got because that's how we all get better. Well, Greg, I appreciate that very much. And I also deeply appreciate you taking time today to join us uh, on the program. If people wanted to talk to you about their business ideas or to talk to you about uh, olive oil, 
What's the best way for them to contact you? Uh, to come on by the store. Um, we're at 2400 FM 1488. And that's three miles west of I-45. We're right in front of the Jacobs Reserve uh, neighborhood in that brand new shopping center. And I'm there every day but Tuesday. And that's from 10 to 6, Monday through Saturday. And on Sundays from 12 to 5, you'll find me there at the store. So come on by. Ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to do it. My wife and I, as I mentioned earlier, have done it. They've got wonderful products. She's definitely in love with one of your dipping sauces. It's amazing. And ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you joining us today. We're going to take a short break here. Uh, And when I come back, I'm going to offer you some tips and some ideas that I really hope that you can use today. Are you planning on growing, expanding, or possibly selling your business? All of these business opportunities require developing strategy and setting goals in order to achieve success. Providing specialized consulting in these and other key business decisions is what Silver Fox Advisors have been doing since 1986. Let us help you today. Call us at 713-343-3718. It might be the most profitable call that you ever make. You're listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your host and Silver Fox advisor. And this is the part of the show where I like to offer some tips and advice uh, that I hope that you could literally use today. Um, First thing, though, I'm going to give a real shout out, but this is something that in your business you could do the same thing. I think one of the the important things as we tweak and grow our businesses is to seek out recognition, public recognition for our business and the people that work for us. And a good friend, uh, somebody I talk about on the show from time to time because he puts out some useful tips in his uh, newsletter, and that's Matt Umboltz. Uh, Matt has a company, PaySphere Payroll and HR. And recently, PaySphere, which is a full-service payroll and HR company here in the greater Houston, Montgomery area, was announced they were ranked number two out of 55 small business finalists by the Houston Business Journal as the best place to work. You know, these awards to me are very significant. Uh, Again, and I encourage when you have a chance and your business is at the point of growth that you can take the necessary time to put it together, whatever the application is, and participate, that you go for these kind of awards. Because in this case, they're the number two place, best place to work in small businesses in the greater Houston area. And think about the power of that. In fact, I had seen Matt since this award announcement came out, and he was telling me that they had a candidate for a sales position, very important position for the company. And he shared with them that he was aware of that they had participated in the contest. They had been selected as a finalist. And now when they became or were selected as number two, he says, that's what put me over the top to want to work for your company. So congratulations to Matt and PaySphere. Uh, and again, everyone needs to take time to take your company, put that name out there and let people know about it. Next thing I want to talk about is a little different twist. Uh, lots of folks talk about, okay, what's the secret to success? In fact, I think there's even a, a movie or two that uses a title somewhat like that. But I came across an article recently that I thought was a little different, and perhaps uh, I hope uh, worth sharing with you. It was written by Laura Garnett, uh, who is at Performance Strategies, uh, is her business, and she wrote an article entitled Secrets to Success Based on Scientific Facts. Now, this is based on what science says. It's not what I might think or someone might think that it was the secret to my success, but it's with some scientific facts. And I'm going to share uh, some of those with you. Uh, These are habits that uh, people who are successful do that uh, science seems to back up that they're good things to do. And the first one is meditation. Consistent meditation has been known to literally change your brain and your body. Taking that time and backing up quiet time, and thinking, clearing your head, whatever you want to call it. And this doesn't need to be some kind of uh, Eastern mythology type thing, but the idea that you close your eyes, preferably in a quiet place of your choice. And it might be for a minute, two, five minutes. I find five to ten minutes a day just totally relaxes me. It also allows me to think. New ideas come into my head. One of the things I try to do is keep a pad and paper nearby. And as I meditate and things come to my mind that I need to consider or look forward to, 
or try to put together, then I make a, a list, if you will, or make a note of it. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But I guarantee you at the end of that time, I feel a whole lot better, ready to move forward. Science has proved that if you help do if you do meditation on a consistent basis, it helps you manage the stress, stay focused, and remain calm. So I would encourage you to create your own meditation technique. Second thing is adopting a growth mindset. Well, I kind of take this as adopting a positive mindset, believing that I can improve, believing that I can move forward regardless of the challenges. Obviously, that helps us grow. And science has been able to prove reality, uh, statistics, business statistics show this, that if I believe in it, then I'm able to grow and reach new heights of my potential. Those that don't believe in themselves and have that growth mindset typically fail, or at the very least, they don't reach their full potential. So I think having a growth mindset and being positive, that's imperative if you're in business for yourself. Some days it's hard, but you've got to find techniques or ways that you can get your head, if you will, screwed back on in a positive way. I once worked with a guy who was a great salesman, uh, sold a number of different products and services in his career, but he was just a great salesman. And he says, one of the things I teach people when I'm in a sales management role is when they cross the threshold of the business each morning, leave everything else, what happened at home, what happened on the way to work, all their troubles, try to leave them at the door. So when they cross into the business and get ready to go to work, they have that positive mindset that is so important. The next one is having grit. I love this. You've got to have grit. You've got to be willing to have passion and and perseverance for your long-term goals, whatever they are, okay? Success doesn't come down to your IQ. It comes down to how determined you are to achieve your goals. You don't have to be the smartest guy in the room to be successful, but I really believe you have to have perseverance and you have to have a passion. And in the case of passion, it doesn't need to be misplaced. It's got to be real in a sense that you're trying to accomplish things that really can be accomplished. But perseverance, obviously it's been shown many times scientifically, business-wise, that people with perseverance do have the largest opportunity to succeed. The next one is one that I could take some advice from, and we hear it constantly, but I'm just going to give it a brief mention. Be sure you get enough sleep, because if you don't, it's been shown over and over your ability to think, your cognitive, you're your, your just the impairment to your cognitive ability to solve problems and issues. It just decreases when you're tired. You need to have that sleep. You've got to wake up refreshed. And I think that's one of the most important things a person can do for themselves each and every day. In fact, on my list, it's number one. And I still struggle with it because sometimes I'll eat less or I won't take all the meals during the day, but I need that sleep in order to wake up and be refreshed and ready to take a whole day's work as it comes to me. The next one and the last one I'm going to talk about is focusing on the process, not just the outcome. Work experiences and projects that are genuinely exciting for you to work on are the things you need to look for. It's true in every business we do things every day that we don't like to do. But over time, if done wisely, We will shift those responsibilities to others and we will take on those things that we really are passionate about in leading the business because we will have increased motivation, more energy, and get even more done. And there's a way that that becomes so infectious if you're the leader, the owner of the business, that the people who work with you, the people you hire, this is one way to motivate them because if you're excited and what you're working on You're excited on your business, just like our guest Greg Zachary is about his business, then obviously this will rub off on other people. Well, I hope one or more of those ideas that have been proven scientifically can help you in what you do. The next item I have is a little bit of a news item. Uh, The Friends of Conroe. Uh, There was an article published uh, last month uh, in the Conroe Courier about who are the Friends of Conroe. And I think that's important if you do business in area to know the nonprofits uh, that are in your area and what they do for your area, perhaps find one that you can support. As you know, one of the pillars of success in my case is to support the nonprofit part of your community. 
support your community, get your business and your employees involved in the community. So who are the Friends of Conroe? Those are the catfish people, right? Big catfish festival we just had recently. They are the ones that sponsor and put it together. They are the ones who have the volunteers that make the Conroe Cajun Catfish Festival happen every October. They also sponsor the Sounds of Texas music series at the Crichton Theater. And there's a whole lot more they do in this community. But the Friends of Conroe, they also support many of our local organizations, such as the Food Bank, Montgomery County Food Bank, Salvation Army, Montgomery County Emergency Assistance, and on and on and on. One of the things they've done is they, in the life of their charity, have given over $300,000 to other charities and collect over 32,000 pounds of food for the Montgomery County Food Bank. To me, this is amazing. In fact, uh, coming up here at Thanksgiving, they're going to be the sponsors of the second annual Montgomery County Thanksgiving Outreach, which they plan to feed over 2,000 county residents. Friends of Conroe, yes, they are the catfish people, but they do a whole lot more. And again, I encourage you to get out in the community, get involved, get your business involved in the community. I think this is very important. You know, Greg talked to us earlier about connecting with chambers and networking groups, but another very important thing, not to be lecturing, but is to be connected with the charities. And the Friends of Conroe is a good one to check out if your business and you do not have a current nonprofit connection. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our final break for the day. And when we come back, I'm going to offer you my Silver Fox Advisor tip of the week, public speaking and telling your story. So please stay with us. Taylor Eyes PR works exclusively to get your business noticed. Public relations is how others perceive you and your company. By tailorizing the marketing strategy exclusively to your business, your story is told. Taylor Eyes PR services include networking, social media, blogs, press releases, public appearances, and event planning. To learn about Taylor Eyes PR, call Margie Taylor at 936-828-6881 or visit the website at tailorizedpr.com. My business is tailored to yours. Running a business is hard. Pressure to maximize profits and minimize loss continue to grow. Schooley Mitchell of Houston can help. Their independent consultants will ensure you are receiving the best communications and credit card processing services at the best prices. Most importantly, their services are completely risk-free. If they don't find savings for you, there is no fee. Contact Schooley Mitchell of Houston today to find out. Call 832-314-1815 or visit their website at schooleymitchell.com forward slash jmholio. This is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host of the Weekly Business Hour. And I have a surprise guest for you. We just had an individual who was just walking by the station who I thought we needed to talk to. And I appreciate your patience, Troy. Troy, you're with Amanda Senior Care. Is that correct? Uh, it's pronounced Amata. Amata. I said it wrong. I, I'm, Don't I'm worry a bad about habit. It. Don't worry about it. Tell us about Amata. What do you do at Amata that's uh, unique in what you offer? Great. So Amata focuses on three things. Our primary focus is putting caregivers with seniors uh, just to help them age in place, make sure that they're safe and secure in their home or really these days anywhere, whether it's hospital, skilled nursing, assisted living. We have individuals that provide the one-on-one care. What you'll notice in the medical business is you, you see when you go to a hospital or you go to skilled nursing, it's normally a anywhere from 14 to 8 caregivers, or excuse me, 14 to 8 patients to one caregiver. Sometimes families want their own advocate, whether it's at home or anywhere, and that's what we do. But we're also launching into several other things. Uh, One is we're about to introduce a remote technology platform. And that's kind of at the entry level, um, the entry level ability to watch your parents uh, from afar. So you can go online and see those types of things. And then we also work with mainly the senior living communities around the area to help find the right location. It's kind of the idea that if it's not right for my mom, we're not putting your mom there. Well, let me ask you this now. Mata, is that just here in the Montgomery County area, or are you throughout the state or the country? For throughout the country. Uh, okay. Actually, in the Houston area, we have locations all around the city, so we can basically accommodate any senior at any area. Well, that's interesting. But in the technology thing, we were talking a little bit earlier in the show about technology, the idea that the monitoring, what is that, a camera system that you use to monitor the patient? No, seniors don't want to be watched. Honestly, neither do I. So we, we put a platform out there that it's motion detection. 
Okay. And if people go to uh, BeCloseWithAMada.com, they can see an example of it. And think about it this way. Think about you're sitting here and you have your iPad open and you go to the website. You can see where they've been throughout the day. So wouldn't they go to the kitchen or they go to their favorite recliner in the, in the living room? The pillbox, was it opened? Uh, things of that nature. Now, I think it's a little bit too pricey right now to introduce uh, locally, but we're working on bringing those costs down, and that's something we're going to be excited to launch over the next year. So what you're saying to us is, and, and I, I'm smiling because I have an elderly mother, is you, you, you can track where they went during the day, make sure that they've gone into the kitchen perhaps to get something to eat, they've taken their pills, those kind of things. Oh, exactly. Exactly. What, what we learned was there's a device called uh, Life Alert. And it's a fantastic device. I love it. But what we found during research is 80% of people, when they fall, they're not wearing it. They don't want something around their neck or something on their, their arms. So we wanted to introduce a platform that could work in conjunction with that or stand alone. And so you're right. You can go in. And what, what happens is during a, a senior's time at home, they set a routine. Normally they get up at a certain time and they go to bed at a certain time and they eat at a certain time. And so what this system does, it actually tracks, and after a couple of weeks, it sets that timeline. And then anything that occurs outside that norm, you get an instant email or text. So I, I'm excited to, to, to talk about it and even more so to launch it later on. Yeah, that is an exciting thing for someone who's had to deal with elderly parents and uh, in-laws and, and whatnot. It, it becomes a real challenge, especially when they want to stay in the home. That's it. It's independence. You know, we got into this. This is a family-run company. My wife and I started this several years ago. I grew up in the area. I went to elementary school here, high school. These are, these are my running areas. And we looked at what does this community need, and my parents are aging. And we came up with the, the, the idea that the only solution we saw was to honestly go Google it. And I didn't like that. So if we, we feel that if we can, we can increase the services and the knowledge, quite frankly, to the senior market and to the kids of the seniors like yourself and like me, we can create a better environment so families can choose the right decision that's for them. And staying at home is certainly one of them, but it's not the only one. You know, we, we got to look at what Medicare pays for, what it doesn't pay for. We got to look at what options are out there. Long-term care insurance, VA benefits. All of those solutions are something that families should really get ahead of now so that when those decisions are needing to be made, you can make them with the right information. Yeah, those decisions many times get made in kind of an emergency or pressure. Uh, and I've, I've experienced both ways. And obviously, the ability to sit down calmly and to talk to experts like you are, are uh, and uh, see what's out there and see what's available makes it a lot better. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. In fact, you're 100% correct. Most of the time I get a phone call, somebody's in panic. What do I do? We're discharging in two days. And and I have a life, and I feel guilty about this because mom and dad took care of me, and now I've got kids, and what do I do? But I think people understand that when we sit down and we just talk, and we, we kind of discover what your options really are, um, you can walk away from that feeling better. The family members can all have a conversation about what's right. They can include mom and dad because independence is key, and uh, everybody feels a little bit better. So you guys provide planning services, I guess, or counseling in effect. You provide people? Absolutely. Okay. And what areas do you provide people? So I particularly run a, a division that goes from Humble Kingwood through Cypress 290 all the way through Huntsville. Now we've got divisions that do Sugar Land and Katy and divisions that do League City and, and the southern areas. But then we go Dallas and then we go San Antonio and Austin and, and all across the United States. So whether you're listening to this program and, and you're not even local, if you've got a question, call us. You know, our, our passion is for helping people. And we know that if we, we stick by that guideline, making sure that every decision we make, every caregiver we place, every person we're involved with has the right information and, and the guidelines of safety and security are followed, I think we can all win. And let me ask you, that it's, it's, as far as if, I, if the parent, we make a decision together, which I've been through personally, and I know – hundreds of others, thousands of others in this area have, and we need to bring help in to be with them, to sit with them. For an example, my father-in-law, a lady, came several days a week and just sat with him. And so my wife could leave the house, run some errands, whatever, and he loved the conversation. She was a retired school teacher, so she was a very good conversationalist. You provide those kind of people? 
Yes, and, and, and many, many types. So I've got clients where, I'll give you an example, a guy that just has a hard time seeing. He's in an assisted living community. He likes to go get a mani-pedi and go to the Olive Garden. He wants his ra- uh, mail read to him. But I have that all the way to hospice patients. So we run the whole gamut. Whether it's short-term care, whether you're leaving a, a hospital and you just need somebody there for a couple of weeks to get back on your feet, or it's long-term where you want just companionship, somebody to come in and, and spend time with you, somebody that's different than a family member, you know, somebody that has like interests. The goal is to, to structure it so that we, we match people. If we can match the right caregiver with the right family, uh, it's a home run. And, and that's where you, tr- you get the true blessing out of it. Right. Well, there's no doubt about it because that's one of the things. Uh, I grew up in a generation you may have too because we take care of our parents, but who did it was the kids and the grandkids or whoever was of age took turns. Uh, and that wears people down. There's no doubt about it. Oh, I tell the story all the time that uh, 20 years ago there was no need for my company. Exactly that. People were around each other. Families were close. Things were a little bit slower. These days, everything's going 180 miles an hour, and families are stretched across different geographic locations, and they've got sports and, and events and everything. And, and parents don't want to be forced to go somewhere that they don't want to. They've grown up in the house they're in. They want to stay there as long as possible. And so that's how we can, we can help. Yeah, you absolutely, you provide the assisted living in the house or something that of. I think your story about the blind man of having somebody to read his mail to him, and he's in an assisted living facility. Uh, That's very interesting. That's a lot of flexibility in what you do. Well, we have to be flexible. Somebody quite often will ask me what's normal in my business. There is no normal. And families need to know that, that that we're here to solve the, the problem. We're not here to create headaches. If you get into a situation where you go and you want to bring somebody into the house, ask the important questions. You know, are you licensed by the state? Are you carry all the background checks, drug testing? Are you, you know, all those types of questions that would lead to putting the right employee in the house. Those are the kinds of things that people should be concerned with. Yeah, well, there's no doubt that's that's got to be one of the hardest things for people to do is to hire someone to come in and take care of their own parent. I've got a staff that does it every day. I have a kind of a, a guideline, and that's let's hire as many caregivers as we can. And if, if you're listening to this and you know a good caregiver, send them our way. We're always looking because that's the ones we want. If we ask, why do you want to be a caregiver, and they say, because I have a passion for it. I learned a long time ago that if you just follow your passions in life, and, and you kind of, the old saying that if you do something you love for a living, you'll never work a day in your life. I kind of uh, follow that guideline. And it's done more personally, selfishly, for me, that I, I love what we do. And so does my entire staff. You mentioned you work with your wife. And I always ask because that's, that's partners, right? And uh, I've been in good partnerships and bad partnerships. Uh, I've never really worked with my wife. But uh, how do you all make that work? It's because I'm out in the field and she's running the office. Okay. Uh, the, the joke is I do often say I work for her. <laughs> it, it keeps the marriage uh, interesting. But but at the same time, it's, it's, it's the ability to get it done in the right way. Yeah, I hear you. Well, I deeply appreciate, Troy, you stepping in off the street, so to speak, and joining us. Uh, you've got a great company, Amada. How do people get in touch with you? Dial 832-209-8844. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this week. Until next week on Monday at 11 o'clock, this is Rick Schistler, your Silver Fox Advisor. Thanks for checking out this production of Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. For more information on this show and other shows on Lone Star Community Radio, check us out online at IRLoneStar.com. If you're interested in sponsoring a program on Lone Star Community Radio and reaching the local audience of Montgomery County on FM, Internet, TV, media, please call 936-647-5747 or contact us online at IRLoneStar.com. This recording is a Lone Star Community Radio production produced by the show host and Dick Schischler of Lone Star Community Radio. Interested in volunteering as a music DJ or starting your own talk show? Contact Dick Schischler at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com or by phone at 936-647-5747.